Hey there, folks. Uh, Biddy Kong here, uh, and this is Little Nemo the Dream Master. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this game, uh, this is one known Capcom platformer. You know, back in the, the 80s, early 90s, Capcom released a ton of movie-based platformers, and a lot of people don't know this is actually based on a movie. Um, a lot of people actually knew the game before the movie, but... Uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, runners, uh, we have Stormcrow, uh, 56k, and he is actually the world record holder for this game. Um, and that's actually a recent thing, uh, until, uh, I don't know, about a month ago. Uh, the world record, previous world record holder, Havoc Prodigy, held it for about three years. Um, and he recently toppled him, and then bested his time, like, two days, two days ago. Um, and then Crit Rocket is another one of our Nemo runners. He's very familiar with the game, great runner. Um, and it should be a good race because there's a decent amount of random stuff in this game that I'll explain as we go on. And yeah, so I think we're just waiting for the runners to get ready and then... All right, looks like the runners are about ready, so as soon as we go. Three, two, one. And so to start, we've got the Mushroom Forest. Um, so... Uh, right at the very beginning of the game here, we've got a cutscene skip. So if you don't uh, jump and basically duck and then jump straight out of your duck, Flip will come up and talk to you. This is actually a really tough thing for people to get their heads around when they first start the game. Uh, and I think it probably puts a lot of runners off to starting it because it's actually a frame perfect thing. But fortunately, you can pause buffer it. Uh, and yeah, so that's what they, you, you saw them do there. And I'll, I'll uh, point it out again when they do it. You got to do it at the beginning of the first three levels and then or, um, you know, a couple other times, too. Uh, and, yeah, so they're on their way through the Mushroom Forest. This is a pretty easy level, as you can see. Uh, basically, the, the concept relies on feeding candy to animals and then turning into them. So if you haven't noticed, uh, with the mole, basically, Nemo rips his head off and stuffs himself inside. So, um, but, hey, it's a world of dreams, so anything can happen. Um, so they're going through the waterfall here, and, uh, yeah, I mean, this, again, pretty short level, and, uh, pretty straightforward. The frog obviously bounces on stuff and kills it. Uh, the hitbox on the frog is a little bit unreliable as well. Sometimes you can bounce on them, and, uh, it will hurt you in addition to, um, doing that. So actually, that's what they are gonna do here on this lizard. They're gonna take that damage boost. Um, lizard damages them, damage boost. Um, and there you go, level one. Real fast one. And then after every level, you have uh, this little cutscene. Emo uh, basically uh, gets out of bed and, um, you know, goes off to the next dream. So uh, it's kind of just this callback joke for the entire thing. And here we go. Now we're into the flower garden. You're going to see a new t another cutscene skip here. Uh, this one's a lot harder because you've got to do three in a row. Um, and you'll see Crit. He's, uh, he's doing it. And he actually ended up doing four in a row. It looks like you can do it in three. Um, but it is kind of difficult to do. And then you've got the monkey here. Um, nice little bit of trivia here. In the Japanese version, uh, the monkey has a scar in his mouth. Uh, so a little North American censoring there for you. And then what they're going to do is they're going to climb up this tree. And you'll see them do this a lot when they're climbing vertically. They'll jump against the tree and it'll basically just, um, you know, help them get up faster. Uh, and until recently, actually, we would have grabbed the lizard and done um, kind of the long way around for this. But what they're going to do is uh, they're going to go over. They're going to drop down this pit without grabbing anything. And then basically the frame before they would hit the bottom, grab and climb back up. Now, if you don't climb back up soon enough, too, that bee will walk to the right and knock you off to your death and then uh, runs over. And then they're going to come up here. So now, as soon as they get that key uh, and drop down... Um, into the water here. And so this is the first uh, kind of unobvious place you're supposed to go. Nemo's kind of a maze platformer. There's a few times where uh, you've got to get all the keys uh, to open the door at the end, and the key is in a really obscure place. Um, and obviously, intentional death there. It's just a death warp. 
A uh, little trivia about this hill. Um, we also death warp there to despawn a really annoying enemy that will spawn there if you don't death warp and you do it the intended way. And these tadpoles, uh, they're kind of kind of really just jerks. Um, well, I'll talk about them more later. And you saw Stormcrow. He did a, uh, a skip that was only recently found where you and crit missed it, it looks like. Um, where basically, if you don't grab the lizard, which uh, Crit's going to do it the intended way, you can de-boost off of the uh, the little spider there and get through the level faster. Uh, shaves off, I don't know, probably about 10 seconds. And now they're both through. And that's the Flower Garden. So we're coming up on House of Toys. Uh, this level is a whole bag of random. And this is the second major hurdle for people uh, first picking up the run. Um, because when you're first starting, this is kind of the validator of the run. If you get through House of Toys, uh, then the run's good and you finish it. Um, the idea here is that you're going to ride on this toy train, which is pretty cool. Everybody loves a choo-choo. But uh, you're going to get hit by these or attacked by these planes and these balloons. Um, and not only do the planes, the same number of planes will spawn every time, but the planes spawn in random positions, and you can see how most of them are dive bombing, dive bombing storm. Right now, um, if you watch Crit as he goes through it, um, dive bomb, random ones dive bomb, they show up in random places. Uh, it's it's a really tough level. See, hardly any of them dive bomb Crit. Um, really tough level to be consistent on when you first start the game, but eventually you, you kind of learn, uh, if you run back, you can kind of anticipate where they're going. Um, Storm making his way through the pancakes right now. Uh, and then you've got this stupid little squirrel here. And you're going to see your first spikes. And uh, spikes really play a prominent role, role in this level. And you'll see more here in just a second. Um, about that. So you'll see uh, in this part coming up, they're going to position themselves uh, in a very specific spot on the train so they can move as little as possible. Uh, and it'll become readily apparent why. Uh, and yeah, so, and by, and by the way, as you're dodging all this crap, you still have to get keys, uh, because you can't go back and you get the keys at the end, because, hey, auto scroller, they're great. So, Storm's coming up on what we call the Spike Squish, and, uh, the first time you do this, if you're playing this casual, this, this part just gives you, that gives you a heart attack, uh, because you're not expecting it, and then the, the, the expected, and then the train just starts slamming you into the spikes, it's wonderful, it's great. Uh, and then, uh, a little further on here, you start getting these planes, um, and you have to be careful because if you get hit by the planes, they'll de-boost you up into the spikes. And one of the unique, charming things about Nemo is that iframes do absolutely nothing for spikes. It's not like Mega Man where you can get hit and run across spikes for a second or so. Um, iframes, spikes don't care. Uh, spikes are jerks, and they'll kill you anyway. Uh, so if you, even if you de-boost and you hit spikes, it is instant death, period, uh, every time. So that's it's one of the fun things about Nemo. Um... And you'll see storms coming up on the end here, uh, and you can't even see the keyholes. He he hit the the um, the frame of the door before uh, you saw the keyholes, and he's out of the level. Now we're on the night scene, um, and here you got another cutscene skip to start. This is actually probably the easiest cutscene skip uh, in the game, at least for me, um, beyond the first one. Uh, basically, you just want to pause, jump until you get in the water, and you're good to go. And uh, you'll see him coming up on it right here. Now, on this level, we have our first real water mechanics, um, and the way this works is Nemo, uh, if you're not pushing any buttons at all, Nemo would float to the surface, and period. You can't stop it unless you're act actively holding down, so that's a little tough to get used to sometimes. Storm just got the crab, and the point of the crab is he can dig in the sand, um, which is pretty fun uh, and pretty unique. Um, now, what Storm is uh, doing right now is he's, he's, there's actually multiple ways to complete this level. He's going this top route, which is a lot faster, um, and then hitting the frog up here. you got to be careful when you first start running the game. It's real easy to impale yourself on those spikes and jump too high with the frog. Now he's going to go down, and it's going to look like he's backtracking, uh, which he kind of is. But this is another one of those little areas that, uh, if you're playing this game casually, it makes no sense. Because, boom, you enter this, and ta-da! You're in a part of the level that really shouldn't exist. Uh, and there, yes, there is a key in here, so you have to do it. Um, and then you got these little spiky fish. Uh, he's obviously swimming around, positioning them, so they're not an issue for him. And then he's going to come back out, and you come back out where you entered, and now you can continue the rest of the level with the number of keys that you need. Um, crit just a little bit behind him. Uh, there's also a tadpole that spawns there. He did a little wiggle to despawn the tadpole, because if that tadpole spawns, um, you can really ruin your day. Uh, now he's going to come up out of the sand here, 
And there's a mechanic that we use in this level. Uh, basically, if you jump uh, and cancel, um, you will maintain your jumping speed. And uh, Storm's coming up on the end here. But if you jump in the water and cancel, uh, then you'll maintain a jumping speed that's like twice as fast. And see, crit didn't do it. And you'll just rocket to the top of the surface. And crit's coming up on the end, too. It's actually a pretty close race so far. Uh, it seems like crit's uh, behind, but there's a lot of random, especially in uh, Nightmare 1, uh, that can really turn this race around. Now we're in Nemo's house. Uh, there is a cutscene skip here, but it's really easy. You just hold left and A. Boom! Buffers past the cutscene skip, and you're out of there. Now, so Nemo's house um, is a really annoying level. Uh, there's a huge skip in here that I'll explain once Storm and Crit get to it. But uh, basically, this level, if you die, you have to start over. Uh, it doesn't matter how many keys you've got, because your keys do persist to dying. That was a weird glitch that Storm got. I've never seen that clip before. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Basically, if you die, you've got to start from the beginning because everything's gated behind these animal transformations. So you got to do them in the right order. Now, Storm's coming up on something we call the basement skip. This is one of the oldest exploits in the game, but we have a new way to do it now. See, he paused right there, and boom, he got over it. Now, this saves him from having to go down and all the way around the basement. But just to explain how that works, the basement skip, uh, basically, he, he goes up into the ceiling. And in Nemo, you can zip, but you can only zip left. So basically, he jumps up into the ceiling, cancels out of the frog. Um, but he's not out of the run yet. Uh, you basically go up into the ceiling, and when you cancel out of the frog, Nemo moves up. And so basically, he moves up, clips into the ceiling, and then zips left until he can get out. Well, that little bit of zipping left is enough to clear that gap. Um, and it is actually possible to jump the gap, but it's a pixel-perfect jump. It's extremely hard to do. Uh, now, that, that frog clip uh, is um, something that is a very recent thing. Uh, Biko came up with that strat, uh, and so we haven't been using that for very long. That complicated strat explained now. Uh, you'll see they're both in the bee suit. The trick with the bee suit um, is you can only stay in the air for a specific amount of time before you can't flap your wings anymore. Um, the trick there, the caveat, is that it doesn't matter if you jump or if you're flapping ledge and never flap your wings and still uh, are, are in the air after a certain point, then you can no longer flap your wings. So basically, you're only allowed to be to off the ground for so long before your wings don't work anymore, even if you've never flapped them at all. So that can be a little tough in this level uh, because you're trying to maximize those jumps and maximize that flight time. Uh, but, you know, it's relatively easy to get used to. You just have to get used to it. And Storm's coming up on what is my least favorite transformation in the game. Uh, this is the mouse. The mouse is a jerk. Uh, his hitboxes are completely screwed up. Uh, they're way too big. Um, and then he's got that hammer there, which is way less useful than you would think. And I'll explain why um, here in just a minute when Crit starts smashing some blocks with it. Or sorry, Storm starts smashing some blocks with it. Um, Storm's coming up on what he's what he has coined. I think this is his, his coining anyway. Uh, he's coined it the Jesus Boost. And so, boom, he didn't get it. Uh, so sometimes when you hit that turtle front on, it actually will boost you to the right. It's like a second worth of time save. It's not a big deal. Um, the hammer, you'll see he jumps slightly before he hits the hammer. That's because if he doesn't jump, um, like short hop like that, then he will not be able to get the, the blocks that are closer to the ground. Uh, it, the hammer will just go right through them and it will break nothing. Um, so the, the blocks, you know, they're kind of annoying. Uh, take a little get used to it. And he's at an emo's house. Um, crit coming through the attic here. Uh, he's going to go for the Jesus boost, I'm sure, too. Um, and he didn't get it. Uh, and so he's going to come up on the end of the level. Again, um, as much as as much behind as it seems Crit is, uh, this actually still could go in his favor um, when he gets to Dream 8. So Dream 6 is Cloud Ruins. Uh, this is kind of a uh, one hardest cutscene skip in the game, because you'll see he goes over that gap. You time that wrong. Uh, you go straight in the hole, and then you have to watch the cutscene, so insult to injury. Um, I don't know if he'll do cloud skip here. Basically, you can jump onto the second cloud. No, he's not doing it. Um, but the idea here is it's a uh, standard platformer mixed with a, with a vertical auto-scroller. Auto and so he's coming over into this cloud area right now. Into cloud ruins right now. Um, and if you were to die here, you would end up spawning right back at the beginning of the level. Uh, the only way to really learn how to do this part is just to memorize it. Uh, it's it's unfortunately just um, 
kind of annoying. But he'll come up here to the top, and you'll notice he'll get to the very edge and he'll wait. If you try to take off from that ledge before the screen stops scrolling, uh, there's not enough RAM in the game, and so it actually won't draw the rest of the level, and you'll just go to the right and slam your, your face into an invisible wall. So you have to wait. Uh, and it actually, he'll, he'll, he'll do it again on the way down. And he's coming out. Um, this is a part where that little pollen will follow you down if you're not careful, so you just throw a candy at it and freeze your pollen so it doesn't make you sneeze. And then, uh, crit on his way up, and storm on his way down. Um, obviously navigating the clouds like a pro, uh, and he, I'm sure that he will wait at the edge again. And you'll see Storm's going to wait on the top cloud up here uh, once the screen stops scrolling. Because uh, he doesn't have to jump down. And then once it stops scrolling, he goes right. Now there's a snail boost right here that's actually really tough to do. Uh, and he nails it, of course. Um, he's, he's very good at that, that specific strat. Uh, and honestly, it only saves about a second. Maybe two if you're lucky. But, uh, you know, seconds. Um pretty much burn your run if you fail it so you know he likes to live dangerously i guess uh and you can see we're about to enter stage seven and, and uh nemo just guy won't go to sleep uh so we're coming into topsy-turvy here now for me personally this is my kryptonite this level um this is another one like nemo's house where if you die you start back at the beginning uh, and you really have to do the whole thing over again the keys aren't really the gate here the animals are the gate abs the frog uh, and he'll go over here, and, um, you know, he'll probably hang on to that. Uh, oh, and did Crit... I totally missed that. I was watching Storm. Looks like Crit died, uh, on the way down, so he's got to start back over, uh, at the top of Cloud Ruins, and, um, without that B-suit, that's gonna, it's gonna cost him a lot. Um, he could still catch up, uh, if Storm gets some, a bad roll of the dice. Or eight, but it's, uh, yeah, so he's on his way back down. Uh, so Storm is over here in Topsy Turvy, and he is getting that mouse, that, that jerk of a mouse. He's gonna go up and break some blocks. Um, boost off the pollen, which is great. He's gonna come down here, that monkey, not even worrying about killing him. Uh, and then hop up there and grab the frog. And, uh, if, he, if Storm doesn't do this quick enough, the bee can actually come to the left and knock him off. Then he'd have to go grab it again. And yeah, now he's going to use the bee suit to keep going. And it looks like Crit uh, waited for the snail, which in this case I think is the very wise choice. Uh, now he's on to Topsy Turvy. Um, not much to see here on uh, Topsy Turvy with uh, Storm Crow until this point. But Storm also will uh, take a really risky route right here. He pops off that cloud, goes under here, which by the way, there's nothing under him right there, lands on that cloud. Ghost grabs that key and then goes to the door. If he mistimes that by about a second, um, in one of like three different places, he dies and has to re repeat the level again. He likes to, to live dangerously. Uh, crit starting topsy turvy as um, Storm enters the bathroom break, which is basically a two minute ish long cutscene uh, where the princess gives you a wand and then the mechanics of the game completely change. Well, not completely, but uh, how you deal with enemies changes. Um, this is a good point, usually, for me to explain uh, the origins of the character. Little Nemo is actually based on a, um, or not based, the character of Little Nemo was actually uh, created uh, by a guy named Windsor McKay in the early 1900s. Uh, so this character that this game is based on is actually um, over 100 years old, which is pretty cool. You can't say that about a lot of video game characters, um, you know, with, with the IP. Uh, and this game was actually created because some fan who was actually Japanese uh, decided to make a movie about Nemo in the 80s. You may have seen it. Super trippy movie. Um, not even the best movie ever, but uh, for me at least, nostalgic. Uh, and this game is sort of loosely based on that movie, but uh, this game actually was, was so good and so popular back in the day that a lot of people played Nemo before they ever even knew the movie existed. Um, but regardless, the character, you know, has survived this long. Uh, which I think is pretty cool. And um, you can actually, they just released a, a uh, compilation of all of the old comics from the 1900s. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Now you'll see uh, she's explaining the wand to uh, Nemo on Storm's uh, screen. 
This is going to change the way he moves and the way he attacks for the rest of the game. For the rest of the game, um, we have we cease to care about keys. Keys don't matter anymore. This is a more of a platformer action. Uh, you get through the level and you fight a boss at the end, and then you win. So Nightmare Land, which is Dream 8, is going to be broken into three stages. Um, a lot of it, Storm is actually going to do something called a beam boost, uh, and I'll explain what that is, or you'll see what that is at the very beginning. Um, but it's a frame perfect uh, trick that he is just amazingly good at. Uh, and the first time I saw uh, the previous world record holder have Prodigy do it consistently um, in his world record run, man, my, my brain just about exploded. Uh, because it is tough to do, but it, it like a lot of things, it is all muscle memory, and uh, Storm just happens to be really good at that muscle memory. Um, and so here we go, we're about to go into Dream 8, which, uh, by the way, my favorite soundtrack in the game. Um, see, he's, oh, he missed the boost. There he goes. So basically the idea is if you jump at the exact moment that Nemo releases that beam, uh, it will propel him backwards, and you can see how that will save you a lot of time in this level. Um, and Storm's just going to keep on going through this level. Uh, after you get that lizard, it's kind of just jam right and go. Um, oh, he got hit by that. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever seen him get hit by that fire jet, but he's not going to care. Um, and he's going to keep on going, and actually, it's a real short level. He's almost to the boss. Uh, now, a little explanation about this boss. He's going to try to position himself in a really specific place because this is the Penguin King, and this guy is probably the most random thing in the game. Uh, what he's trying to do is he's trying to position himself on specific pixels on the ground, and depending on those pixels, uh, based on the research we've done, and it looks like he, he is not going to get the quick kill, um, you are either... Oh, this is a long fight. Uh, you are either going to hurt the Penguin King, or you're actually going to give him health back. Bad pixels actually will revert hex values for him um, in the code, and will give you uh, a bad fight, because you're basically healing him, and so eventually you will kill him, because there are twice as many good pixels as bad pixels, but it can last a while, and that was actually a very long Penguin fight. Um, and it's really, it's really, really hard, because there's no way to tell what those pixels are. So that's where Stormcrow um, actually lost a lot of time, and depending on how he does, uh, you know, Crit could catch up. Where he is now is called Purple Hell, uh, and I know there are Purple Hells in other games, we call this Purple Hell as well. Um, and this is the hardest single screen in the game. If you're, if you're playing this casually, uh, it is an absolute nightmare, no pun intended. Um, now he took a damage boost off of those, but the idea here is you've got to get to the top of the screen with at least two little chicklets of health, and you will see why in just a second. So he's very clearly controlling where those pollen are falling. And he's going to do a damage boost here and climb up the side. And that actually allows him to skip uh, probably, I mean, over half of the time he would, the intended time spent in that stage. And then come up here, and you're not supposed to have the lizard here. So they never programmed a, uh, a hitbox, top hitbox for those spikes for the lizard. So you can just go whoop, straight through this entire part, completely ignore basically the entire mechanic of this stage, uh, hop on up there. And you'll see he attacked right before he jumped out of the water. Um, I didn't mention that earlier. But if you attack before you jump out of the water, uh, you'll almost always jump two blocks high. If you don't, then a lot of times you block, jump one block high. Now he's going to go for the quick kill on Manta Ray. This is relatively straightforward. Um, you know, it's uh, he's gonna, probably going to kill him off screen. Uh, pattern is not normal. Um, the uh, uh, the Penguin King here. We'll see if he gets a quicker kill than Storm anyway. Storm advancing to uh, Nightmare 3, which is the last stage in the game. Looks like Crit is not going to get quick kill either, but uh, he, is, he is doing better than Storm. Um, deal with the beams. Uh, I'm going to explain this before we get to the final boss with uh, Storm Pro. Um, you can see him beam boosting all over the place here. Uh, is The beam power bar is very misleading. Uh, about three quarters full will actually damage enemies about the same amount as completely full. Um, and you can see him beam boosting over that lava. Uh, so it's a little misleading. Uh, you know, if you if it's only a little bit charged, you know, not going to damage much at all. But um, the, the the bar is not completely, you know, accurate. Uh, lots of things about this game are not completely accurate, to be honest. But it's fun anyway. Um, looks like Crit missed the first. Pollen skip. He's going to try again. Oh, and he missed it. 
Uh, that's gonna be so. The, the problem with skipping the with the, the Nightmare Two skip, Purple Hell skip, is if you fail it, you do have to start Purple Hell over again. And it is actually a time save to go back to the beginning of Purple Hell and try again over uh, trying to do it the intended way. See uh, Storm, he's using that mouse to bounce up here. This is the part that blew my mind uh, in that world record one. He, he, he is beam boosting over these these geysers, and this is where he is just uh, 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 is extremely consistent with that. And at this point, um, this final, this they kind of gave up on this final screen for Storm Crow. Uh, <laughs> it's literally just get to the the go go right, and boom. Now he's in. Uh, he's going to be in the final boss room. Looks like Crit did get the uh, the pollen skip. Um, Propel skip. Last attempt. And now you'll see, uh, yeah, Storm Crow's at the final boss. This is the Nightmare King. Uh, basically, you'll want to throw the beam in his face and hit him in the face. It does more damage. Um, avoid the, uh, the bloody, like, throw up that's flying through the air. And as long as you do that, you are in good shape. Um, first learning this, this boss, uh, that can be tough to manage. Uh, it will be time when basically, boom, the explosion stops, and that is time for Stormcrow. Uh, looks like Stormcrow is the winner of this race. Uh, and yeah, so congrats to him. It was a great run. Uh, and Stor uh, Crit coming up on um, the end of Manta Ray. Uh, looks like there was an intentional damage boost there. And um, about the same kill that Stormcrow got. Neither of them got the quick, quick kill on this boss, which is fine. Um, and now Crit is on to Nightmare 3, and so we'll see what happens. The uh, Stormcrow in the end sequence there. Uh, and hey, Crit gets a, a good beam boost at the beginning. He's going to try to get as many beam boosts as he can. Uh, you always do. It's worth noting that uh, if you are not pushing a low 24, um, you probably have better time saves than beam boosting. Um, just at least in my opinion, uh, it is a really difficult trick to get the hang of, uh, and it takes a lot of muscle memory and a lot of practice. And, um, yeah, if you're not, if you're not pushing 24, like if you're not in, you know, the high 24 is trying to get lower, uh, you probably can work on other things, um, with the current strats because the time has dropped a lot here in the past eight months or so. Um, but you know, he did his beam boost well. He's, you know, he's going to try to do it again at the top. We'll see how he does. Um, you're getting the B here. Uh, basically, you just need to watch where your bats spawn. And I didn't explain this. He's actually going to despawn the pancakes. Maybe? Nope, he didn't do it. Um, you can actually despawn those pancakes if you get the bat to follow you out, uh, because the game doesn't have enough RAM to draw both. It looks like he got Nice Mouse. So Nice Mouse goes away from you, Mean Mouse goes towards you. It's random. Um, if you get Mean Mouse, you got to fly around on the other side. Uh, it costs like a second, but I figured I'd mention it since we're here. Um, and yeah, he's trying to beam boost through. Let's see how it goes. Um, a lot of times if you get off rhythm with these beam boosts, it, it becomes very difficult because the the uh, fire geysers become, um, they lose their rhythm. You, you don't, they don't actually go up in a rhythm after the first time. Um, and it's a little bit random, so it, it can be tough. And he got through, so good. So now he is in uh, screen three, um, or screen two. He's about to advance into screen three, which is the boss. And we will have two completed runs um so he's coming down into the boss and uh hey, you guys know how this goes storm is doing this final boss i do want to just uh say uh if any this looks fun to anybody um and it is a really fun run uh we have a, a really good community that's that's kind of grown around this game um you know and gotten a lot bigger recently. Uh, we actually have an advanced tutorial, uh, or sorry, a beginner's tutorial and an advanced tutorial, um, which actually the advanced one was done by Storm Pro uh, over on the speedrun.com leaderboards. Uh, so if you want to go uh, check out the forum, if you're interested in running, lots of resources there, and we are always super happy to help out. We don't have a Discord for this game, uh, but we do use that forum um, and answer people and try to collaborate there. So, uh, yeah, so it was a great run, and um, I'll do it for these guys, uh, and I just wanted to thank um, RGL uh, for uh, all they do, uh, awesome channel and always awesome content here, and super excited that they uh, decided to let us show off this Nemo run. Um, hope you guys had fun. And congrats to Stormcrow on the win, and uh, you know both runners played a great game. So 
Uh, until next time, hopefully we see you guys out there. And uh, thanks for watching.